This is the Alabama Orthopedic Clinic D1 Training High School Football Preview Show. Week 7 here on UTV 44. We jump back into region play this week for our matchup between the Spanish Fort Toros and the St. Paul Saints. This one taking place over in Spanish Fort. Jim Cox and Dan Brennan. Of course, we'll be uh, here for the game this evening. And last week we had, uh, we, we said in, the, in, in this show and right before kickoff that even though it was a non-region game, you really expected to have a very intense game, big rivalry game. We weren't cheated at no. all in that one. Overtime, no, yeah. Fairhope win after a uh, huge Daphne comeback in the fourth quarter. What a great game we had here on UTV yeah, 44. Yeah, when you say we weren't cheated, in fact, we were given some bonus <laughs> yeah, time. Free football. <laughs> it was really something. You're right. Uh, Daphne had a rally. It didn't look good. And uh, they came back from 17 down on the road. Uh, great crowd there at, at Fairhope. The cannon was doing its thing, <laughs> or whoever operates that thing. Uh, great game, great kickers, great special teams, yep. and uh, you, you could feel the intensity of that rivalry, again, even though it was not a region game, and we get back into region play today with some old friends meeting, uh, but that was really a great theater, and we got a chance to be there live. Yeah, and we, uh, we talked about this with Vic Lockett after the game, saying, you know, is this one of those, could this be one of those games that really propels Fairhope in 7A? And he thought, yeah, absolutely. And then you hear the news that Sheldon Lehman's going to be out for at least a few more weeks yep. for McGill, too. And so I think Fairhope's really put themselves in a great situation. Clinton ready to close out the, the latter quarter of the season here. Yeah, they have, and they do it in a very familiar way when you watch Tim Carter's teams. They're very disciplined. They're disciplined, and they're at the same time very ferocious. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're, they're a physical, smart, tough defense. Kind of starts there. And I uh, thought we got really great play out of their young quarterback, too, the sophomore. Yep. I thought he stepped up and he was really, he showed at least what he's going to be. Yeah, he's going to be fun to watch the yeah. next uh, couple oh, of yeah. years. And uh, Trent Battle on the other side for Daphne, he's going to be fun to watch. Like him a lot, uh, too, yeah. Uh, as well. Every week we have one of the doctors from AOC join us here. And uh, Dr. Cesar Roca with us again uh, this week. We talked to him here a few weeks ago. And uh, we're going to talk about uh, clavicle, the, uh, the the clavicle injury. And right. you were just, we were talking beforehand about uh, biking and biking downhills. And right. I, I would yeah, guess for a lot of guys our our age, maybe, uh, that's probably a common occurrence of the uh, well, injury for... Well, the, the, the clavicle, which is the collarbone that connects yeah. the shoulder to the torso, uh, is, is one of the most common uh, fractures in your, in, your, in your bone, in your body. And uh, yeah, uh, falling on the outstretched arm or falling directly on the, on the shoulder, it's a very common way to fracture your clavicle. And it's usually in the, in the center of your clavicle where it occurs, right? You know, and, the, and you feel your clavicle and even, I mean, I'm a kind of big, big bone, strong, so like strong. a guy. Now I'm being, that's two weeks <laughs> in a row I've had a doctor. <laughs> but it seems like you, it has to be quite an impact because you just feel that bone and it feels like. It's, it's right there. Yeah. You can, you, it's right under the yeah. skin. You can, you can really feel it right there. Mm -hmm. yeah, so. That's this dance. I'm feeling I mean, dance just right now. Even, I mean, even, even with big, big muscular guys, you can see, you can feel it, right? It's right under the skin. But it takes right. a pretty, pretty good, is it, is it more of a, is it, is it the, are you landing here or is it something that's pushing it forward and making it right. break? Right. So, um, you can have a, a direct impact, but very commonly, if you're playing soccer or football and you land on your arm or you right, direct mm -hmm. land on the shoulder, mm -hmm. that so that compression is what makes it break right here. Ah. And you can imagine it, this is the same thing like we talked last time. There's a spectrum of injuries, so you can most commonly you have a tiny little break in the middle, and most most clavicles can be treated conservatively with just a sling, mm -hmm. and, and you know about two, three weeks, you can start moving in, and it does, it does take about six weeks to heal. Uh, but if, if you have a bigger impact and, and the fracture is uh, in pieces, sometimes you have to have surgery for that. Mm. And, and, so, and it may, if, it's, if it's touching, you don't do anything. But if it's separated, or if it's in fragments, or the bone's about to stick out of your skin, yeah, mm. but if, you know, oh yeah, I can yeah, tell you all yeah, kinds yeah, of horrible things. Yeah. <laughs> but it's, it's, you can also see it's, it's why the NFL is putting such a big emphasis on linemen yeah. not putting the weight on quarterbacks when they come down, because that's a, I mean, we've seen Aaron Rodgers go down mm -hmm. like that, and right. and you know right away, I mean, especially we talk about this. Plus, you know, the, with the, we, a big lineman have this big shoulder pads, so mm -hmm. the quarterback wants to be flexible, so the quarterback, the quarterbacks wear this little uh -huh. bitty, this big shoulder pad, so right. they, they are more, much more dangerous than mm. of course, the big guys with a, with a, with a big shoulder pad. So uh, the biggest preventative thing, don't tumble over the handlebars of your bicycle, <laughs> don't get tackled by an NFL <laughs> lineman, is that pretty a good, good thing? I mean, actually, uh, one thing is uh, with athletes, learn how to roll. 
So just understand that if you just land like this, you're going to break your wrist, you're going to break your shoulder. So as, as you're catching a pass, you're getting tackled, try, just roll. Just be flexible. It, it roll with it instead of still being stiff. And I mean, coming to places like the one where they teach you techniques, and, mm -hmm. and this, this is essential. Good training. That's where the coaches and the trainers come in. Oh, just if, if you're in shape and you have good training, you're going to prevent injuries. We should remember that because, I mean, we could fall in the press box, tripping stairs well, at, at, any, at any moment. It's so dangerous. Any you're, yeah. you're, you're, you're so, you're hey, look, so yeah. dangerous. The NFL is not looking at me closely, and I saved my bike. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm good. You know uh, that risk. I'm good, guys. Uh, uh, You'll only Brooklyn. see me on this show. Uh, with us here again this week, we're going to come back and get my ready pleasure. for the big matchup, a uh, 6A matchup, Spanish Sport in St. Paul's tonight here on UTV 44. Big region game, both teams hot coming into this one. We're going to talk more about it right after this. A region one matchup tonight and uh, boy it is a big one and it's in Spanish Fort Spanish Fort and St. Paul's head coach Steve Mask here with us again this week Peyton Henderson wide receiver with us here as well and uh, boy coach uh, we saw your you know we we talked about after the blunt game we did and we said you know if we told Lev Holly hey you're gonna hold you're gonna hold them to 11 you think you're gonna win the game you can flip that around and say you can hold them to seven we told you before the game you're gonna hold them to seven you feel pretty good you're gonna win that game and your defense has not looked back well played really well defensively you know they've got a lot of talent there and and uh, we were really scared to death going into it how we were going to handle some of the speed and and the size factor but uh, kudos to our kids for doing what we asked them to do and we played awful well and then, then offensively you know it's the same formula just don't turn it over and move the chains and score when you get a chance to score that's what we did yeah you uh, special teams uh, kind of big in that game field goal mm -hmm. safety after a, a pressure on a punt yeah, uh, we felt like going into that that was going to be a difference and, and that, it worked out Jim it was that way Defense has played really well, not just in the game we got a chance to see you in, but in the opener and all the games mm -hmm. since. Talk about how that glue mm -hmm. well, is, we uh, get, is, we had is sticking. Some, we got some good players over there to start with. You know, you know, Yace Kranz, a three-year starter at free safety, and he's able to get us lined up and put us in the right fronts and mm -hmm. coverages. And, and, you know, Dan, we, I think I told you this off the air, we're doing a little bit of smoke and mirrors. Now you see us, now you don't. We may line up in something and we'll snap. Obviously, people do the same thing, but we're doing a pretty good job of disguising some coverages and fronts and stuff like that. And we have to. We can't just sit in there in a base front and a base coverage and, and hold our own because of some size differential. But uh, I've been very pleased with our defensive team. Yeah, and uh, offensively, Peyton Henderson, as we said here, wide uh, wide receiver, probably uh, know this week, like, uh, going to need some points. I mean, you need points every week, but this this could be a little more high-scoring game than maybe uh, some games that you have on a regular uh, weekly basis because, you know, this team is Spanish Fort, known to put up big, big points. But y'all have some weapons over there, uh, got some weapons over there as well. Yes, sir. I'm um, really just trying to put up points and uh, let our defense go to work. We can just get ahead and let them uh, hold them to, you know, zero, whatever it is. Talk about what it's been to you and the whole experience of being a St. Paul Saint because this is a program that, for as long as we've been doing this, mm -hmm. has had such a great reputation, a great legacy in the Mobile Baldwin County area. I mean, if you're a St. Paul Saint, you're not just playing football. You're playing for one of the best uh, programs uh, in our viewing area. Yes, sir. It's truly a blessing, you know, not just football, but uh, all our pillars we have, you know, getting a great education, which is going to better me. And, life you know going on after football looking at uh, the matchup region play big uh, big battle as as it were I know uh, one week you got to play the game that's a that's in front of you but everybody knows this is a big one I mean this is this, this is a big one here that's well, why we're that's why it's on that's why, that's why well, we're exactly back with you know, on TV that's oh why, yeah, yeah exactly we're both undefeated in the region mm -hmm. and and uh, uh, the thing I, I like about this is, and, and I said this when we moved this classification, we're familiar with a lot of the teams that we're playing. We've had some great wars with, with uh, Spanish Ford over the years, and so it's almost a, a, a not really a thrill. I'm not looking forward that much, <laughs> but it's, a, it's really exciting to be play, playing back in that arena with them. It's a great place to play. The, the stand's right on top of you. It's loud, and, and uh, we don't think it's intimidating because we've been in some other places, but it's just a real fun place to play. And, you know, and, and, and to Peyton's credit and all of our wide receivers, we don't exactly fling it 35 or 40 times a right. game. So they have to do their role and, and block. And he's done an outstanding job with that, along with all of other wide receivers. But, Jim, you, you're right. We wouldn't be sitting here if it wasn't a big game. But it's the next game. Mm -hmm. You know, it, 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 when Friday night, tonight's over with, they're going to have a game next week. We're going to have a game next week. Hopefully it puts 
puts us in a position going forward that we can achieve what we're trying to achieve. So both teams know how important it is. You know, you were talking about uh, maybe trying to disguise some coverages on defense and doing some things, and and obviously that'll be a big part of the game. But uh, the guy calling the plays on the other side, on the offensive side, he's going to give you some formations and looks that are going to be a big challenge for uh, because we see it every time they seem to come on. Well, the field. you know, and, and Ben's good at that. I mm -hmm. mean, he's you know he's got good playmakers. He makes sure he gets the ball in the playmaker's hands. But uh, you know, they're going to give you multiple formations and all that kind of stuff. So. That's the fun part about football to me. That's why I think I have a hard time leaving it. I enjoy the chess match part mm -hmm. of it. And obviously, when both of us have pretty good players, it makes it a little bit easier. And, and trust me, I, our, our players will tell you, coaches coach and players play. And so we got to do our job of coaching with what Ben's trying to do and, and his staff and, and vice versa. We show a lot of different looks on offense, too. So mm -hmm. it, it should be entertaining to watch. We uh, always enjoy games on the hill. It's great to have St. Paul's once again as a region opponent to Spanish Ford. Coach, we've seen some, uh, we've seen some Donny Brooks over there, right? I mean, <laughs> yeah, am, am I lying? It, it, it's, it's not a place for the faint-hearted. That's <laughs> for sure. Trey Williams, uh, you know, everybody saw that. It was legal. I was just saying it was a big. Yeah, uh, it was legal, uh, but, but everybody still talks about that. We've had some outstanding matchups. Really, really, I mean, good really stuff. good things. Yeah. And, and we've been there. And y'all been, been there. Yeah. I mean, in 2010, we played him in the second round, yeah. was, and that was the de facto state championship yep. game. You know, and. Uh, and then in 12, they beat us in the semifinals, and that was a de facto state championship game. But anyway, they're, they're, they're fun to play. You know, they, they do it right. They play hard, and, and they do it right, and I think we do it right. Some, some of the kids were talking this week uh, back in the 2010 game, and that was such a the, – the atmosphere at that game was just, just bonkers. And they said they were – the St. Paul's kids were playing with the Spanish Fort kids, playing just pick up football on the side of the stadium that night, and they said – that was intense too. Even though, so right. they're probably what fifth, sixth grade at that. Well, they were there for that. about five years. If we played them in Tiddlywinks, it was pretty intense. <laughs> <laughs> That's what right, makes those it. Those kids, by the way, are going to be on the field tonight. Yeah. yeah. So, there you uh, go. Uh, and they all know know each other. Well, we're uh, we're excited. It's the game of the week. It's why we are uh, here for our matchup tonight. We're very excited. We're going to find out more about tonight's game from the Spanish sports side of things as we're just about 15 minutes away from kickoff. St. Paul's and Spanish Ford tonight. Peyton, great to meet you. Be safe out there. We'll see you in the last segment. We'll come back and talk with Ben Blackman and the Toros coming up right after this. You know, I'd say it's a big one on the hill, but when we're there, it's always a big one. Well, that's what we Always show. a big one on the hill. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> yeah, we love coming to Spanish Ford. A uh, big matchup tonight, 6A Region 1. Spanish Ford playing host to uh, the St. Paul Saints. Both teams unbeaten in the region. Both teams coming in with four-game winning streaks after uh, setbacks uh, in the first week. Each team playing uh, outstanding football. Chris Tuberville, uh, offensive lineman here with us. And as we sometimes punt returner, right? Occasionally? Punt return. Yeah, so, uh, <laughs> Saints getting a little info here. We'll be back there returning punts. Coach uh, Ben Blackman here with us as well. And I know... Um, and just uh, and I know last week was your was your off week and uh, the timing probably uh, could have been better because I know it was a very emotional week at Spanish Ford with yeah. um, Jamie Milam uh, passing away and I, and and I know you've talked about it and it's been written about but what a um, inspiration from uh, strength perseverance grace I mean just a lesson that. Uh, not all the lessons are learned on the high school football yeah, field. Exactly. Rob uh, exhibits that for our kids, you know, for what he's dealing with and to come in every day and, and still put his best foot forward when he's with us and then to be struggling with all that mm -hmm. through his life. And um, and many people don't don't know yet, but, uh, you know, his father passed away Monday night. Uh -huh. And so uh, one wow. week apart, he lost oh. his wife and then lost his father. And uh, so he'll, he'll uh, have his burial Saturday um, in New Orleans. So Rob is uh, definitely a strength to and testament to our kids and our program. And, and you know what, and uh, Jamie was such a big part of the Spanish Fort community, not just from the high school and from high school football, but Absolutely. the city and everything. So I mean, the community, that, that family needs a community like Spanish Fort right now. Without a doubt. And uh, you know, we're, we're grateful to have him in, in, in our community and uh, our community loves Rob. Oh, and uh, I know he'd like us to get to talk about football. That's what he'd like That's us right. to uh, do uh, right now. So uh, as we said, St. Paul's coming in undefeated. We've seen great matchups on UTV 44 when y'all were in the same classification and uh, kind of expecting the same tonight, Coach. I mean, this this, this is going to be a great one. Oh, absolutely. You got you got two good football teams. Um, 
Uh, Coach Mask is one of the best coaches in the state of Alabama. You know, he's been in a long time. Matter of fact, he's he's one of the guys when when we go off to coaching things, I, I, I gravitate to him and Coach Curtis and because those guys got a lot of experience and I think you can gain some wisdom from listening to those guys. They've been in a long time um, and, and he knows what he's doing. He, he's very, very good and, um, and and he's got his kids playing hard. They always play hard for him and, uh, and they're not out of position. They don't make mistakes. They're fundamentally sound and so, you know, it was, it's going to take a good, good dose of us to do the same. You know, uh, offensively, we uh, obviously Spanish Ford and uh, Coach Blackman known for putting up big numbers, see great play designs, really uh, keeping defenses on their heels. I mean, it's, uh, it, it's got to be, it's got to be uh, add some fun factor for the big guys up front uh, as Absolutely. well, as opposed to maybe uh, maybe not, maybe just uh, lining up and doing uh, other things. But it's got to be fun playing on the offensive line this offense. Oh, yeah, it's definitely so much fun. I mean, just getting. To see like all your guys you you block for, O line don't get a whole lot of glory. There is no O line scored this, did that. So to see the guys you block for all day go out there and get those accolades is it's almost like it's for us. Yeah. And how many times have we seen a lineman like I think I've seen Chris himself when there's a big play and suddenly the lineman himself is saying that's a <laughs> touchdown, and you guys are able to raise your arms knowing that you had a lot to do with that guy that's. 30 yards down the field. Yes, sir, and that's that's really what it's all about for an yeah. O lineman. Yeah. And and, and uh, when you have those really speedy guys back there, don't have to hold the blocks quite as long either, right? They're uh, up and uh, They're gone. Uh, up and up and gone. So uh, we saw your team early in the season. Uh, your team continues to uh, progress, and you always talk about that, saying, "Hey, we just got to be getting better each and every mm -hmm. each and every week." Uh, and I would have to think you feel feel good about the tra trajectory your team is is on right now. Yeah, I think coming off our, our last game and into our bye week, I think we're we're, we're starting to find our niche and and and, and find out who we are and and develop that, that mentality and hey here's who we are here's who we're going to be let's go be that guy and um and and we're starting to find that and and that's a good point where we want to be and now you know um we're getting into the, the heat of the season where you know we're playing defending 5a state mm -hmm. champs and we're playing the Baldwin County Tigers and the and the Blunt Leopards and all those Sarah Lands and all the guys down the road, um, and, and at the end our goal is still to be there standing. You know we want to be the last man standing, mm -hmm. and we got to fight through this region first. And uh, you know and so that's that's kind of our mentality. Uh, we know Coach Blackman from the press box looking down, and we can see the intensity there. I got news for you. I traveled about uh, three blocks this way uh, a couple of weeks ago, <laughs> and Coach Blackman was on the sideline for, were those fifth and sixth graders? Fifth graders, yeah. Fifth graders. And uh, you made sure the referees were on their toes. <laughs> That's right. You know, you got to always keep them in check, right? You know? <laughs> but it was, it was great to watch you interact and the way the kids looked at you. And, of course, you're not the head coach of the fifth graders, but you got a boy on the team. And it was just a lot of fun to watch. Yeah, you know, that's, that's I, I leave our practice in the afternoon and go to his practice. And I try to be involved with our youth. And my son's coming up through there. So I want to make sure, you know, it's doing its right, you know. And our coaches with that team do a great job. Of, of teaching teaching the kids, you know, the values of football, yeah. you know, and it's not all about wins and losses at that age. It's, you know, be tough, line up, be disciplined, those little things right. that you can teach, and uh, our guys do a really, really good job. It was funny. I left, and he shoots me a text. Did you leave already? Where are you at? <laughs> I said, I got stuff going on, man. You're known to leave football games early. Not right. the ones where... All right, okay. well, not those. those. I would just quickly, though, uh, so uh, Coach Blackman, I would just... There's, like, um, we, we joke about his uh, intensity. You can see it there. But, like, there's there's no gray area, I'm guessing, during practice. Like, you yeah. you know exactly what the what the drill is playing oh, for this man, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and so that's the same with all of our coaches. It's very straightforward. This is what they want. This is how it needs to be executed. There is no... Maybe you could do it this way. Maybe you can do it that way. It's either right or wrong. Yeah. And that's... That's the way to do it. And yeah. proves in the results. Member of the football team, not the debate team. <laughs> That's they, right. they, they just do it the Spanish Fort way. Uh, all right, Chris, uh, great to meet you. And uh, you can fair catch on TV. It's all right when you're back there. Uh, return a punt. Uh, stay here, Coach. We'll have Coach Mask here. We'll wrap things up. Ten minutes away from kickoff, Spanish Fort and St. Paul's tonight on the Hill here on UTV 44. The coaches, uh, the, 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 don't yeah, the coaches talks that we love yeah. to have here as we uh, get ready for kickoff tonight. Spanish <laughs> Ford and uh, St. Paul's, and I know you were standing over there, uh, maybe talking to Terry, didn't hear, but uh, Coach Blackman said, and, and you know, we've heard this about you and Terry Curtis for, for so long that the younger coaches uh, 
gravitate toward you, whether it's at a coaching convention, off season, whatever. And I'm sure that's what you did as a, a younger coach. But it's got to be gratifying when you have a coach who's been as successful as Ben has in his early career saying you're someone that he kind of... I don't know if it's gratifying, but I just feel sorry for him. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm very flattered with that, and I did the same thing, and, and that's very kind of Ben to say that. We've, we've known each other for a long time, and when you do this stuff as long as I have and, and, and Terry has, then you you get a little bit of wisdom. Sometimes it's bad wisdom, but, it, <laughs> it, but it's... Uh, my son calls us the, the mafia because <laughs> there's about seven or eight of us that the older guys sort of hang together. That's again because we're the only friends that we have. Yeah. But uh, yeah. I, I and, appreciate And you could probably that. outhang most of the younger coaches. I'm just saying well, I'm totally saying, yeah, I just uh, say, all right, so we'll uh, go back here and now... There, get no ready. Need, there was no need to go yeah, there. Yeah, I was just saying, no. just uh, they'll break down film as late as you want to break That's down right. film. All there right, so Brent in, Brent out, the game we play here to get ready to uh, kick, get ready for kickoff. So uh, we're in October now. Uh, about nine billion kernels of candy corn. Yeah. Uh, that's more than 35 million pounds sold annually. Candy corn, Dan Brennan. Brent out. I'm Brent in. <laughs> Brent in. Yeah, I'm kind of out. I'm not, I'm not totally, oh, yeah. but, but not. Uh, can, candy corn and peanuts, put it together. Oh. Try it. You're talking about a sugar high. <laughs> that's it. I'm not, I'm not there. Okay, so in Wales last weekend, Dan Brennan, a new record was set for the world's fastest shed. Which is exactly what it sounds like. A shed, in a shed, you're in a shed going 100 and mile, 101 miles an hour yeah. down the road. Dan Brennan riding in a shed going over 100 miles an hour. Brennan or Brennan? Well, you know to be, me to be an incredible thrill seeker. <laughs> but I'm not going to get in a shed in Wales, period, if it's, if it's stationary. No, so he's Brent out. Nah, I'm Brent out too. I, I don't even know I'm where the whales is. Okay, okay. So it, it wasn't more of a geography test. It was more being in a shed that goes okay. uh, underway. All right, uh, NHL uh, season underway this week. World class skaters. Dan Brennan getting on ice skates. Oh, Brent out. I, I'm out. Uh, no, I can see you twirling. No, uh, I'm out. Oh, I can still uh, twirl just a uh, little bit. All right, uh, UB40. UB40 was in the news this week oh. for reggae music. Reggae music, Dan Brennan, in or out? Uh, yeah, I'm in. Yeah, Bob Marley. Love me some Bob Marley. Oh, yeah. stick an ice pick right there on the first note. And I love music. I love going to the Caribbean. I just can't stand it. Uh, you know, the song Red Red Wine, mm -hmm. UB40, you know who that was written by? Uh, what was? Uh, oh, I know, Neil Diamond. Neil Diamond. Yeah. Neil Diamond, Dan Brennan. Uh, out. Out? Out. Ian, it's an old country song that Neil Diamond did later to remake. Yeah, I like, right? uh, I, like, uh, I like some Neil Diamond. All right, uh, today is National Kale Day, Dan Brennan. Kale. I'm out. out. I'm out. All right. I'm in. Here we go. Kick French off. Fries. Kick, kick off tonight. On my patio with a burger. French Watching fries. the Bears. Yeah. Kick off tonight. Spanish Fort and St. Paul's here. Coming up next on UTV 44.